Welcome back to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise of Finching Field. The other day I was reviewing the videos I've done so far and I realized that a lot of them are not geared toward the very beginner tablet weaver. Like a, this is your first weave kind of video. Something that is really, really easy, really gives you an opportunity to get the feel of turning the cards without having to turn them back and forth, without having to follow a pattern really closely. So I thought I would do a really, really simple pattern. And this is it, folks. This is really, really simple. It's a pattern from Ladoga. It dates back to the 8th to 10th centuries. Uh, Ladoga is a little community that's near St. Petersburg. Well, it's about 120 kilometers away. I would have to do math to figure out how many miles that is. I think it's, I don't know, maybe 80 miles. I'm going to do the math. 120 kilometers a mile. 74 and a half miles. Well, that was pretty close. So you remember the pattern that I did way back in episode two? It was a very simple pattern, but I had to concentrate really, really hard to say Ladoga instead of Lagoda, because apparently I had transposed those letters and I had been calling it Lagoda for, I don't know, a year. But it is Ladoga. Ladoga. So I'm getting ready to go off to May Crown for this camping trip. It's the first one I've been on in about two years. And I've almost forgotten how to camp. It's it's funny. I'm going through my list going, okay, I'm going to forget something. It's probably going to be my pillow. But I also wanted to bring a weaving project with me that didn't require me to bring a pattern. It didn't require a clipboard and a ruler and heavy concentration, a gallon of tea. Being on social overload, I am not going to have the mental fortitude to follow a pattern like, like this one. That's really complicated. So I just want to do something that requires no attention span at all. So as I discussed before, there are several pieces that were found near these Rus burials. They date to the 8th or 10th century. They were found in these burial mounds next to the Volkov River near Staraya Ladoga. There's a whole bunch of photographs that I found online. Uh, I'll put the link below so you can see the area and some of the mounds and the dirt bike tracks that go over the top of it. It's very cool. As I may have mentioned before, the Staraya Ladoga area was uh, an important trading center in the Eastern Baltic during the Middle Ages. The town that was located here was an important gateway between the Baltic Sea and the Russian river systems down to the Black Sea. Some of the archaeological finds that were located here are silver and some weights and scales, proving that this was a vibrant merchant community. There were also raw materials, tools, and manufacturing debris which indicates that this was an industrial area, uh, a center of cottage industries and crafting. A researcher by the name of A. N. Kirpichnikov wrote an abstract called A Viking Period Workshop in Staraya Ladoga Excavated in 1997. He details the findings that were in a trench dug on the site. What he discovered was a burned down workshop that seemed to specialize in glass bead making amber carving, and possibly bronze casting. That sounds like a really fun maker space to hang out in. I'll put more links down below if you want to go look into that. One of the other burial mounds that was found there was from Oleg the Prophet. Now he was the supreme ruler of Russia from 879 to 912. Now the legend says that he seized power in Kiev from Askold and Deer and laid the foundation for a very powerful Kievan Rus. It's also said that he led an attack on Constantinople, but the dates from contemporary scholars and historians are a little different. And also, according to legend, it was prophesied that he would die from his stallion. So, being a wise man, he sent his stallion away so that he wouldn't die. So years later, he asked about the horse. Hey, whatever happened to my horse? And they told him, oh, the horse died. He says, I want to see the bones. So they took him off to see the bones. There it was, the bones of the horse laid out. Just to make sure, he nudged the skull of the horse with his boot. Well, a snake slithered out and bit him, and he died, thus fulfilling the prophecy. I'm not sure what the lesson is in that. I guess don't kick a dead horse. So on that note, let's get started with this weave. You're going to need three colors. Um, it's best if you have, you know, a couple of lights and a dark or a couple of darks and a light something like that, so there's a lot of good contrast, and you'll need 10 cards. So grab your loom and let's get started. We're going to get the weaving done in just a second, but I thought I would introduce you to 
this loom that's new to my collection. Um, I actually got it a few months ago when I got the Becca loom. Um, I was also given this one from a friend of mine who just recently moved to Pennsylvania, but I thought I would take this opportunity to kind of take it for a test drive and see how it works and, and see what I think about it. Um, so far, it looks pretty good. I think it's a solid maple. Um, it seems really strong. It has a nice wide base on the on the bottom of it, so it's not going to teeter while you're working. It's got a, a really good handle on this uh, sliding tension bar. It seems to slide nice and smoothly. And it's a big, thick scoop and piece of wood there. These are all really big um, dowels, so they're not going to bend real easily. So I think this is going to work out really well. I'm also using different cards today. These are from Rowanberry Jam. I got them on Etsy. Um, I believe she's based out of Russia. I'm not absolutely certain, but they're all 3D printed and she's got them in, I don't know, a dozen different colors. So you can have a rainbow of colors of cards in your setup. Um, I chose these uh, wine green and I've got some cream colored ones as well. The holes are a little small for a pencil, but you should be able to fit maybe a size five knitting needle in there. So if they're too small for a pencil, you can always use a knitting needle. A uh, double pointed needle works great. Um, let's see, what else? Um, oh, I've got different yarn. I decided to try these. I got these from the Woolery. Um, this is an 8-2 cotton warp. I usually use the 8 over 4 Maysville cotton. This is the Maurice Broussard 8 over 2. So it's a little bit finer. And I thought I'd give this a try. The colors are really vibrant. In that spirit, because we're doing all kinds of new things with uh, new loom, new cards, and new yarn, I decided to go with a new tea. So this is not Earl Grey. This is a uh, Melbourne breakfast. And it's got a kind of vanilla scent to it. It's really delicious. So it's an all new day. If we're ready, why don't we get started? I know the first color is red. So I'm going to grab the red and then put the whole thing on the floor. Okay, so the first two cards are going to be four threads each of red. Up and over, back and forth, like we always do. Where is this foot? It's kind of in the way. Um, there's not a lot of clearance between the peg and the foot, so that's kind of annoying. Oh yeah, this is a, a much finer yarn. This is going to be very interesting. I actually did this pattern once before in the 8 over 4, so I'll be able to put these side by side and really compare the, the sizes, the widths. I'll get out a ruler and everything. It'll be awesome. You guys will be absolutely beside yourself with joy. Trust me. Okay. All right, card number one. These are all S-threaded. Now, because these cards are completely unlabeled, um, it's going to be fun if they were, you know, Cyrillic on them, but they don't have anything. So uh, you really have to pay attention to how the cards are facing when you're finished. If it's going to be a particular uh, pattern, you may want to label them. You could you probably use a Sharpie. So these ones, because they're S-threaded, are going to go through the back of the card. And again, these are tiny little holes with tiny little thread. But of course, four different or four of the same color, so you don't have to worry about um, which color goes into which hole. It's all the same. All right, I'm going to scoot the thread back on the pegs. So you may find that over time the pegs will bend just a little bit so you want to make sure that they're kind of in situ when you're uh, warping it up okay left over right twice right over left once and you've got your 
solid surgeon's knot, so that's not going to go anywhere. Now, number two, nice long tail like we always do. Following the same, ooh, following the same path. Watch to make sure your threads aren't snagging on other pegs or on the foot, because that can mess up your tension. All right, card number two is Z-threaded. A Z-threaded will go through the front of the card, or the, the right side. Now, you could thread it the same way you did before, and then just flip the card, because all the four threads are the same color. Get in there. I wonder what I'll use this one for. I kind of chose these colors at random. Um, they just look nice together. Red, yellow, yeah, red, yellow, and blue. They just, they just look good together. I think it's the colors of the Estonian flag. My, my son would probably be able to tell you. He knows all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, so card number two. Nope. S and Z. All right, card number three is using all three colors. With all three colors, you line up the ends, grab them all at once. I'm gonna put my fingers between each thread so they don't twist. Still leaving a long tail. Pinch that down to the peg and follow the path. Over the peg and back to the beginning. The yellow. Line up the yellow right there and follow the same path. And that makes warping so fast. Okay, so all of these will alternate SC, SC, SC all the way across. So we need to do this one, S-threaded, going through this side of the card, the left side. A and C are yellow, and then B is red, and D is blue. But of course, since the cards aren't labeled, you just need to make sure that you have the cards threaded the right direction, make sure the yellows are across from each other, and then the other two are across the other corners, and then we will turn it or flip it into position at the end. So let's just get going.
So we're just going to do this all the way across. So you probably don't need to hear me talking about it a lot, and I will keep it up. I'm just gonna quickly double check my work, make sure I've threaded these correctly. Now I wanna make sure that I alternate S and Z. So going through the back, that's S. So it comes down and through the back. Um, this one should be Z threaded. So I need to flip that card. So you'll also see how the threads go down when they're sandwiched together. That's the way you want it to look. So this next one is as threaded, and that's correct. I want A to be yellow and B to be um, red. So the red should be down there. So I need to turn it twice to get yellow in the A position and red in the B position. And then you will continue all the way across. That'll be exactly the same. Um, except that this will be Z-threaded and then S-threaded and so on. So I'm going to turn all the cards until they are in the correct position. Okay, now I'm going to just triple check and make sure that this is S and Z, S and Z, S and Z, all the way across. Wait a minute. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and down. Okay, so they're all in the correct position and ready for weaving. So we've got, this is one thing that's going to be annoying. I'm going to show you this. If the threads get too close to this uh, length of wood, it slips into this crevice here and that'll mess up your tension. So you want to make sure to center your threads a little further away from that hole. Otherwise you're going to get things stuck. Just something to be aware of. Okay, we are ready to do some weaving. Now, once you make sure that all of your cards are in the correct position, which I've double checked and triple checked, uh, you'll need to get your shuttle. This is a shuttle I've had for a little while and it's split right down the middle. So I glued it back together and I think it's gonna hold. I think it's okay. Um, just use some Elmer's wood glue, put a clamp on it. I think it'll do fine. So we're gonna start like we always do, pulling the tail through to the right, nice long tail.
I mean like an extra long tail. Turn all the cards forward and pass the shuttle through. We're going to pass the tail through the other direction. Turn all the cards forward again. Pass the shuttle through. And the tail. Turn the cards again. I'm going to give it a little tug. Yeah, oh, this is going to be so fine. Well, not super fine, not like silk fine, but it's going to be nice and delicate. All right, pull that through. And now we're done with the tail, so we're going to tuck that out of the way. Wait, did I just pass it? Okay, yeah, turn the cards one more time. It's been that kind of a morning. All right, so see how narrow that is? It's really quite tiny. And this is gonna look so cool when it's done. Now, of course, you can do as many cards wide as you want because this pattern is infinitely expandable, or you could do it a little bit narrower if you wanted, but I chose to go with uh, what was in the pattern, which was 10 cards. Now, to show you how easy this pattern really is, what you've seen here is the entire repeat. It's just turning it forward over and over and over and over again. When it gets over twisted, you will turn it backwards over and over and over and over again. Alternatively, you could flip the cards, but it does the same thing. So we're going to keep on weaving and you'll be able to see the pattern emerge. Very simple, delicate, but very elegant period pattern. Just super simple, but so gorgeous. So the 8-4 is a little bit more than half an inch wide. And the 8 over 2 is a little bit under half an inch wide. Near Storiad, mm, see? Near Storiad, this is why, this is why we have editing software.